we're going to talk about how to study the Bible. So, if you are like me, I'm going to revert back to my college days and Bible classes and all that kind of fun stuff. If you are like me, then there's probably a lot of things in the church that frustrate you. Raise your hand if there are things in the church that frustrate you. Okay. Yeah, me too. And one of the things that frustrates me most about the church, and about pastors especially, because they're really annoying, is that they say things like, Nobody said amen. I'm, I'm really appreciative of that. But they, um, they say things like, you all just need to study your Bible. Then they never tell you how to do that. You need to read more. But they never suggest ways in which you can read or how you should read or where to start reading. All questions that I get all of the time in emails and texts from people. Um. We do a lot of that in Christianity. We say things, especially to new converts, that they haven't a clue what we really mean when we say it. It's just jargon in Christendom. Okay? So today we're going to talk about how we actually go about studying the Word of God to get something out of it. Okay, so open your Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And let's just talk about the first thing before we read the first verse, which is probably that if you don't know that Timothy is part of the New Testament, you should. You should know where we're going. Chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15. I'll give you a second because 2 Timothy is kind of buried in there. It's in the epistles. No, the epistles are not the wives of the apostles. And yes, someone did actually ask me that one time. Seriously, they actually asked me if the epistles were the wives of the apostles. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, let's read that again. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, so before we can talk about how we study, let's talk about why we study. We study because God tells us to study his word. Study is different than reading. Okay, we're going to talk about how that's different tonight. But we are to study the word of God to show ourselves approved. Approved to who? Approved to people that we get into conversations with. A lot of people think that verse is specifically talking about clergy, pastors and priests and deacons and evangelists, and it's not. It's talking about everyday people of God, parishioners, saints, people in the church, people who are part of the church. How in the world can we share the word of God with somebody when we don't just we don't flat out know the word of God? It's absolutely impossible to do. So study to show yourself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed. It's really embarrassing when somebody comes to you and asks you for some advice about something and you haven't a clue what um, advice to give them or a scripture to take them to or, you know, not that we know every scripture in the Bible, not that we should have the entire Bible memorized. I don't know of too many people throughout all of history who have ever had the Bible memorized, but we ought to at least have a general idea of what we believe and why we believe it. And the only way to really get there is if we know some scripture or we at least know where to go in the Bible. Okay? Um, like, if I, if I put some things out there, let's see what you could do for me if I just gave you something. Where would we go if I wanted to talk about faith? If I didn't understand faith, somebody asked me, what is faith? Where would I go? Hebrews 11, a word? Yeah, Hebrews 11. Okay. Where would I go... If I wanted to talk about uh, prove that God is the creator. Genesis, Genesis, okay. Where would I go if I wanted to talk about end time events? Be careful. Matthew. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What chapter? 24. Thank you. Why wouldn't I go to Revelation if I wanted to talk about end time events? 
if you're starting I, out with a new convert, yes. you're, you'll confuse them. Right, exactly. I'm going to absolutely confuse them if I go to Revelation, right? Revelation is confusing enough for the saints of God, let alone anybody else. Okay? And especially if we're going to, if we're going to read it in the King James, then we're really going to get confused, quite frankly. Um, okay, where would I go if I wanted to talk about submission? Well, yeah, I could go to Corinthians. Where else? First Peter. How about if I went to some of the females' books of the Bible, like Esther or Ruth, to talk about submission, right? They submitted to a, an elder in some forth, right? Okay, so Ruth submitted to Naomi, Esther submitted to, to Mordecai to get something done, right? Okay, what if I wanted to talk about the spiritual gifts? Where would I go? I think I'd start in 12. 12. Yeah, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 to outline the spiritual gifts, right? Mm -hmm. Where's the armor of God at? Ephesians 6. <laughs> One down. Five. What about the, uh, let's see, what if I wanted to talk about Jesus as the good shepherd? Some description of who Jesus is and how he works. 23rd Psalm. Ooh, that's a good place. I wasn't anywhere I had in mind, but that's a good place. Where else? Well, the whole chapter of John chapter 10 is called the Good Shepherd chapter. So do you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a matter of us actually studying these things. If you just read through the Bible, you'll never figure out um, where to go. You'll never figure out that. What you've got to do is study through the Bible to figure out where we're going so that we have an idea, right? We can help people out a little bit. Let's look at Luke chapter 24, verse 35, 45. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Okay. Actually, let's start at verse 44. And Jesus said to them, These are the words that I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. And this is where I, I, I want to park for a minute. Then... He opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Okay, let's stop right there. The reason that we have to be the workmen that need not be ashamed is because we can quote scripture all we want to, but the world does not understand what the scripture means if they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Because to them, the Bible is just a book like any other book. Do you know there are entire denominations in Christendom who have just in the last couple of years started actually catching on to this thing that we've been doing for about 100 years in the mainstream Christian church called Bible study. Seriously, there are just denominations, Christian denominations, that in the last couple of years have started to have Bible study because clergy made them feel like they weren't smart enough to study the Bible. Okay? So, um, we have to come up with the meaning of what things are. We have to be able to rightly divide the Word of God, which takes me where I'm going now. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. And I'm just laying some groundwork, and then we're going to talk. So, don't get worried that we're going to jump back and forth in Scripture all night. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And please, 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 as we're having Bible study, if there's something you don't understand, or if I'm going too fast, please say, slow down, please raise your hand, ask a question. Whatever you want to do, okay? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for these things. And you might want to underline these in your Bible or write these down because this is really important. Because I've had people even get very upset at me. Yeah, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for these things, for doctrine... For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Those are the four things. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So we have the Bible, this God-breathed word for doctrine, to explain to us what we believe. That's the definition of doctrine. Number two, for reproof. What is reproof? Reproof, is, like if you proofread something, you're going back in to see if it's corrected, correct? So reproving uh, is checking. A lot of m m reproof is, is self-checking, though. It's correcting your own self. Okay? Then the next thing it says is for correction, which means for other people. Okay? 
And then the last thing it says is for instruction in righteousness, mm -hmm. helping us to be holy. God <coughs> says that we should be holy even as he is holy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then let's talk about how we study the word of God. We now understand why we study. Here is how we study. Okay, first and foremost, we need a quiet time, QT time with God. When you go to study your Bible, you need to do it in a quiet place without the influence of the outside world. We need to always pray before we open the Word of God. And if possible, it needs to be the same place and the same time every day. We need to have an appointment with God every single day of our life to get into His Word. Okay? If you do not make an appointment, what's going to happen? You're going to find yourself doing everything but studying the Word of God. You're going to find yourself doing everything but praying. You're going to find yourself doing everything but what God tells you to do. Because we have this thing on our body called flesh. And the Bible tells us that flesh is in contradiction to the Spirit at all times. Which is why the Bible says that we need to crucify the flesh. But even as we crucify it, we still have to live in it. We still have to reside in flesh. It's still going to cover our bones every day of our life. Which means we've got to have an appointment with God. We've got to have a chance to get alone with God in quiet time, okay? And I don't care what that means. If it means you've got to shut the family out and tell them, go read a book, go, go get out of my face, get out of my hair, I love you, but it, this is my time with God. And nothing's going to take the place of my time with God, okay? So that's the first thing. In that quiet time with God, the first thing that we ought to do is not just flip open the Bible to some random spot. The first thing that we need to do is pray, is pray. Why do we pray first? Okay, so the Spirit can get stirred up in us and that the Word of God can be fully manifested in our hearts and our minds. Okay? So we pray for the quickening Spirit, and that's what you need to pray for. God, quicken my spirit. Okay? Because when He quickens your spirit, what He does is enable you to read the Word of God with understanding. Okay? Simply read the words and understand what they mean. You would be surprised how simple it is for a Christian to open the Bible and read the Word of God. And if we handed the same exact scriptures or text to a sinner, they could read it a thousand times and it would never make any sense to them. Right? Because God uses the, the foolish things to confound the wise. Amen? Amen? So people in the world, even the great scholars, read the Bible and they just sometimes don't get it. I hear men get behind pulpits and preach who are PhDs, some of them who have a doctorate in divinity, and they so confuse what Scripture means. Or they make it so difficult that it's hard for a lay person to understand what it means. Because they're trying to display their intellect, their intelligence, instead of helping people to grow in God. Right? Okay, so studying the Word of God is, is not only for yourself, but it's to reach out to other people. Okay. Now follow me on this one for a minute because you can be a Christian and have no joy. Did you know that? The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. I think we quoted that about three or four times this morning. You can be a Christian and have no joy. Okay? Here's why I say that. Here's why I bring this verse up. Psalm 19 and 8. Because it says the precepts of the Lord are right. Giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are pure, enlightening the eyes. Okay, what's that have to do with studying? Again, it's the reason why we study. How do we figure out what the precepts of the Lord is? How do we figure out what the commands of the Lord are? They're right here in this book. It's just that simple. This book is where we find the precepts. This book is where we find the commands of the Lord. If we don't read those words, if we don't allow that to permeate our heart and our mind, then we have no joy. And if we have no joy, we have no strength. And if we have no strength, we won't fight the enemy. So if you are a Christian who doesn't read, you are sacrificing your own Christian joy. And when you sacrifice your Christian joy, you sacrifice your strength. And when you sacrifice your strength, you give place to the enemy to come in and say to you whatever he wants to, and you have a chance of believing what he says.